this is Radhika. Today I'm going to show you how I paint a plain wooden frame using acrylic paint and gesso. So here we have a paintbrush. You're going to need gesso, acrylic gesso, gesso and of course the frame. So we get started by going over the wooden frame with a layer of gesso. No need to mix it with water unless your gesso is a bit old then I guess you would but you should always have nice fresh gesso. And so I paint the front of the frame. This frame is a cheap old frame, not old, cheap new frame <laughs> that I bought and um, it's very sort of Ikea as in it has no personality. <laughs> Sorry Ikea, please don't kill me. Um, so what I'm gonna do is give it some personality. <laughs> Personalization of the framings. So, here I'm painting the sides as well because otherwise that would be, be silly. Paint the front and the sides of the frame. And, and I'm going to only do one layer of this acrylic gesso because later on I'm going to start um, making patterns or designs or whatever with the, this thick acrylic gesso. And I'm going to show you how I do that in just a moment. So once I'm done with that first layer, there we go. So I'm using a painting spatula and I'm getting um, like a thick amount of paint on that spatula. I'm just digging in there into the straight into the acrylic gesso uh, can, jar, let's call it a jar. And I'm making these sort of I don't know, petal patterns. You can do whatever you want. And this was a complete experiment. And so if you're going to try to do something like this, you can use whatever you want to create that patterns. If you have stamps, go ahead and use those stamps. If you have uh, a different shaped spatula that you think would work, then go ahead and do that. Um, there are no rules here. I'm just creating texture uh, onto uh, on my frame using the spatula and I went for this sort of petal design because of the shape of my spatula um, and like I said I'm just sort of doing what feels good right now there are no rules um, so da 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 Da, 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 da. I don't know if you can hear in the background, that's one of my dogs barking and my husband trying to control the situation. <laughs> you know, when you have dogs, or I guess kids, I don't have the kids, but I have got the dogs, really, there's not much you can do about noise pollution. It's, it's just there. Deal with it as best as you can. Ta-da! So, here I am, uh, painting. Uh, the uh, what the gesso onto this frame and as you can see I'm not worrying too much about every single petal being perfect I'm sure there are people who would be bothered by that and uh, who would want every single one to be perfect but I am not one of those people good for me <laughs> saves me a lot of time I think although sometimes it can be uh, to my uh, a disadvantage to do that to just sort of wing it because then you realize you don't like what you made and then you got to start from scratch and that's a huge waste of time and resources. But in this case, that did not happen. In this case, I quite like what I ended up doing and how it turned out. So yes. Doop -be -doo. So once I'm done, I clean off uh, the excess gesso from my spatula and then seal the bottle or jar, whatever. 24 hours have passed. The gesso is now dry, as you can see. So I am going to get started on painting this frame. The gesso is there to give you that white background and also that texture. I'm going to use this copper, metallic copper acrylic paint by Amsterdam 
and um, putting it on straight onto the dried gesso here. There are going to be a couple of layers. My plan is to first put on the copper and then um, put on some of a little bit of a different color, maybe like a brown, burnt umber, something like that, to go into the grooves to give it that old-fashioned look, because I like that old-fashioned look. So I'm generously applying this acrylic paint onto the gessoed frame so that you can see it's going to get this metallic copper look. Of course, you can do whatever you want. I mean, you could put any other color that you would like onto your design uh, frame. And you could, if you have a metallic color, you could put, I don't know, gold or silver. You could put a pearlescent color. Um, actually, that would look really pretty, something pearly. Oh, somebody brought me a bowl of blueberries. That's really nice. Thank you, whoever that was. All right, so I'm here. Uh, Really trying to get into the grooves, don't want to see any white shining through, um, coming through the paint. So as many times as possible, go over your frame, the gessoed frame, with the color that you want it to be, and so that the gesso doesn't show through. And you're going to paint the top of it, and then you're also going to paint the sides. Okay, so here I'm putting in that darker color. This is Burnt Umber, also by Amsterdam. And um, I'm going to also put a little bit of this um, golden, I think it's the gloss gel. Golden gel medium glossy. So, um, mixing that up real good with my spatula, multi-purpose spatula. You can mix it, you can mix with it, you can paint with it, you can create textures with it. It's real good. I recommend spatula. Okay, cleaning off that spatula and we're going to get started into putting uh, this dark brown color. Burnt umber, it's called. It's a really good color. I like burnt umber. And I'm using this fan brush because um, I want to use the fan brush to give me a little bit of that texture. Whoops, something happened there. Whoopsie! Did I knock it over or did my dog knock it over? I don't know. Can't remember. It's uh, We're equally clumsy. So yeah, as you can see, I'm covering the copper with this dark color. But later you're going to see me remove some of that burnt umber. And, and so it's going to give it that sort of antique look. So once you're done painting the uh, burnt umber layer, you let that dry as best as you can. Here you can see me fanning it. And then you can go over it with another shimmery color. Here I'm going for that cop copper again. And I am painting especially the bits that I want to have most coppery. Like I'm not going to paint so much on the grooves where um, I want to keep it a little bit darker. Um, but I am going to paint over the bits that I um, that I want to seem like they're popping out. Giving it a little bit of a more 3D look and but but keeping it also this antiquated antiquated antique copper frame. So yeah. 
Here again, you have complete artistic liberty to do this however you want to. If you want to give it more of an old, dirty look, then you would keep more of that burnt umber color. But if you want to give it more of a shiny look, then you would put a little more copper on top of it. And that way you have three layers of paint that are um, going to cover up that white gesso. Oh yes, yeah, so don't forget to touch up the sides of the frame and oh, doggy barking. No good, no good. Yeah, and keep at it. Now, once you finish painting your frame, you need to wait at least 24 hours before you can varnish it using, well, I use this golden um, brilliant varnish and you have to dilute it with um, white spirit, get a cup for that, and a brush that is not too expensive because it's going to get damaged with all that varnish. So very important, you've got to read the instructions before you do anything. And make sure to be in an open area with plenty of um, fresh air and ventilation. Wear gloves, of course. Ta-da! <laughs> and then mix together, um, it should be three parts varnish to one part white spirit. But check the label anyway. And then you can carefully put that over your painting, uh, your, the acrylic painting, the, the frame. And make sure to spread it evenly so that, um, well, so that you don't have globs of bar varnish in one area and other areas that are not well varnished. So yeah, this stuff is pretty toxic. Do not do this around children or dogs. My dogs were not anywhere in the vicinity when I was doing the varnishing part. Once you're happy with the amount of varnish you've used, you need to wait some time, a couple of days usually, before it's completely dry, and then you can uh, frame whatever you want, a photograph or your own artwork or somebody else's artwork, that's fine. So here you can see I have decided to use this frame to, um, to complement this painting and I think it goes really well together because there's copper in the painting as well and it's all you know, glittery and whatnot. In order to save my nails, I have used a spoon to uh, pull down these um, metal bits that hold the frame together. So um, you should not use your hands for this kind of work, especially if you wanna keep them intact and whatnot. I don't have very good manicure uh, etiquette, whatever it's called. Most of my fingernails are broken and whatnot, but I still try to take care of them whenever I can. Yay! And now you're gonna see, this is what it looks like when everything is done. And I wanna give a special thanks to my patrons, especially Yaya Castaneda, for making this video possible. And uh, thank you very much. Have a nice day.